First tonight, how a chance discovery is offering tantalising new evidence about the lives our ancestors lived 4,000 years ago. Mike Dilger has been to Dartmoor to uncover the story of what's being described as the National Park's most important archaeological find ever. The people who lived on Dartmoor thousands of years ago have left us just glimpses of their lives. Come to the High Moor and you'll find the essence of Stone Age Britain. Enigmatic stone rows and cosmically aligned standing stones. But nearly 4,000 years ago there was a technological and cultural revolution as our ancient ancestors moved from the Age of Stone into the Bronze Age. These hut circles date from that time. There are more than 5,000 of them on Dartmoor, showing a vibrant community living and working here. But what's disappointing and frustrating in equal measure is how few artefacts have actually been discovered here until now. Objects from a Bronze Age burial found on the moor. Actually, I think it's the most important find on Dartmoor, full stop. What makes this new discovery even more remarkable is that Dartmoor has offered up so few of its ancient secrets. I'm meeting English heritage archaeologist Wynne Scott to find out why. So, when obviously I can recognise a stone row here, but this must be one of these prehistory kiss. It is indeed a burial chamber. This kist or grave is made up of granite slabs put in place about four and a half thousand years ago. And how would they be in, have been buried in here? Well, some of them are really small, so you just have a cremation in them. But this one is big enough for a whole body and would have been something like, uh, sort of crouched up like this. This is the standard method of burial back at that time, if they didn't cremate them. But the great thing about these is that you get really close to their emotions in a way. You're getting close to the individuals. This is about you know, how they loved each other, how they respected each other. Well, this rich landscape with 5,000 kind of remnants of buildings, 200 burial kiss, but so few artefacts, why? Well, a lot of it's to do with robbing. Some people have actually robbed the stone, some have robbed the artefacts that were inside because they were looking for gold. But the biggest loss we've got is all the organic stuff. The, the bones have all been dissolved by the acid soil up here. You know, the flowers, the, the gifts of drink and, and food that would, would have gone in. Most of their life was organic. You know, it was, it was stuff that would rot away. If we could get uh, the, the perishable items, the organic material, it would really shine a big light into prehistory. And that's exactly what's happened. A chance discovery of a buried kist on White Horse Hill, high in a peat bog on the northern moor. The kist had been untouched for nearly 4,000 years, until 18 months ago, archaeologists from the National Park levered off the lid. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. There we go. What they found astonished them. An intact burial of cremated remains, wrapped in an as yet unidentified animal pelt, and containing a delicate bracelet studded with tin beads, a textile fragment with detailed leather fringing, and a unique woven bag, scans of which reveal more treasures within. So I'm off to see the site of this extraordinary find, and I'm with the National Park's chief archaeologist, Jane Marchand. Half an hour in the car, half an hour walk, one of the most remote places in England. Jane, it's not Stonehenge, is it? I have to admit, I'm slightly underwhelmed. Oh, I'm sorry about that, but actually, <laughs> what we've got here is visibly maybe not as impressive as Stonehenge, but archaeologically, it's just as important. It's what's underneath. It's what it contained, yeah. So what happened? How did this become revealed then? Well, one of those um, stones actually fell out and somebody reported to us that they thought they'd found this kist up here. Came up to have a look thinking, oh, they, they must be somebody, you know, they're making it up. Couldn't believe it when we saw it. But seeing that it still had its lid on it, there was just, just the chance that there might be still something contained within it. 
Of course, those stones on top are nothing to do they're with it. They're nothing to do with it, no. <laughs> they're just this, you know, Walker's Cairns. And this is the first time that any organic remains have been found on Dartmoor. It is. So, come on, tell me how you were feeling when you actually found it. It must have been astonishing. It was incredibly exciting. And then as we lifted it out very carefully, a bead fell out. And the sort of the thrill of realising, actually, this is a proper burial. This is a bead that belonged to a burial. No one even knows who this person was, only that the remains belong to that of a young man or woman. To think of the scene that must have been going on here almost 4,000 years ago, and the most exciting thing of all, the journey of discovery has only just begun. And December of last year marked a major milestone along that journey. I, I just know. really wanted to be, so yeah. I may be thinking, but um, that's the second bit I've seen. Mm. Mm. James comes to the Wiltshire Conservation Lab, where they're hoping to reveal the secrets of the woven bag. Mm. We were sort of thinking, but we were thinking that might be sort of remains of mineralized thread, because you see the way it's kind of going through the perforation in yeah. the middle. Yeah. Absolutely. Today it's conservator Helen Williams' job to delicately remove the contents for the first time in nearly 4,000 years. The level of preservation we've got is amazing, so um, to find an object like this with contents still intact is, is fantastic, so it is, it's a very exciting day and um, hopefully it's all going to go well. Let's have a look and see what we've got. You can sort of hold that. It's painstaking work looking for and removing bead after bead. Just eight beads have been found on Dartmoor in the last hundred years. It's getting better by the minute, certainly. Yes. <laughs> that one's completely covered over. Okay. But then, something altogether more unusual. Well, it's, it's sort of around um, an object sort of about that size. It's got a sort of two slightly domed surfaces. It almost looks like a very small yo-yo. It would have been worn sort of in the ear. Amazing. That's it. <laughs> I think <clears throat> we try and get, I think we might end up taking some I, d I don't remember studs being recorded in, in any other excavation from this period. That's one there, I'm sure. No, look. And then a glint of orange. Wow, that one's amber, yeah. You can see the surface, the colour of the surface. Oh, that's so shiny. It's an amazing condition. I mean, that's the first time that we've actually seen anyone or seen, seen or handled that material in 4,000 years. So it, it does kind of blow your mind sometimes when you think about that. You know, if I've worked on Dartmoor for over 20 years, I never would have anticipated it get anything like this. Now some of the objects have been cleaned, we can start to appreciate just how delicate and beautiful they really are. So, what have we learnt? Time to meet Jane again, back on Dartmoor. Well, Jane, here we are in this wonderful reconstruction of a Bronze Age hut circle. What more do we know about the lives of people up on Dartmoor three and a half, four thousand years ago? Oh, it's, it's just amazing. I mean, it suddenly brings them, what, to life. Their um, standard of technology, that they could actually achieve things like this. Certainly the bag, they could actually make things like that and they're in a position to be trading and bringing in um, amber beads. There's a level of sophistication I don't think we probably appreciated. I mean, now whenever I'm out on the moor, my eye, get drawn, my eye gets drawn to that ridge. You know, I think, oh yeah, I could go back 4,000 years and see actually what was happening. Have we any idea why these people were buried high up on the hills? Because they may well have lived down in the valleys. They're buried there because they're actually they're closer to the skies. Because it told them when they planted their crops, when they should gather things in, when it was the shortest day, when it was the longest day. And so much more still to discover from these artefacts. Oh, absolutely. We're only at the beginning of a very long journey there. The plan is to display all the White Horse Hill artefacts in a major exhibition next year at Plymouth Museum. Until then, we can only speculate as to what other treasures lie buried on the high moor.